Hello? Hello? Hi. Is it safe? Is it okay? Oh. Oh, great. Thank you. Welcome. Hi. Welcome to the Energy Sketch. It's Michael Johnson. Come on in. Come on over to the whiteboard, folks. Today we're going to talk about steel production. So steel is made from iron along with various additives like carbon, nickel, and other metals that form alloys that are used in many, many different applications around the world. And steel production today is responsible for about 10% of global carbon dioxide emissions. So the first step in producing steel is to take those iron ores, those iron oxides that are mined around the world and reduce them, strip off the oxygen atoms from the iron oxides to produce pure iron, which is then further processed into steel. But today we'll talk about just that first step. So today that first step is done using coke, which is pure coal, like solid, pure solid carbon. So that coke strips off the oxygen atoms from the iron oxides, leaving the pure iron, but also producing CO2. However, iron can also be produced using the directly reduced iron process using hydrogen. So basically what we would do is install massive solar and wind farms around the world, coupled into hydrogen electrolyzers that would then feed that hydrogen into these long reduction shafts that would reduce the iron ores into iron and producing only water as a byproduct. No CO2 emissions from this iron production route. So this is really great and a really important thing that we need to be scaling up around the world and that could make a big difference. But that's not all. This can also make a really big difference in another problem that's super important in the global energy system, and that is energy storage. So this paper here lays out the new concept for iron as energy storage. It's called Recyclable Metal Fuels for Clean and Compact Zero Carbon Power. So the neat thing is that this iron, these pellets or powders of iron that we've produced with no carbon dioxide emissions can be stored for long durations of time and can be simply, cheaply, and easily transported around the world. And then when and where it's needed, we can burn that iron in a flame along with oxygen to produce zero carbon heat and ultimately power also. Then the products of that combustion of the iron are the iron oxides, which then go back into the process to be recharged and recycled. And what I love about this concept is that this can be done over and over and over again. That little bit of iron is infinitely recyclable so that our great, great, great descendants in the future, centuries from now, millennia from now, could be storing energy in that same bit of iron that we start with today. I just love that concept. There's something so beautiful there. In future episodes, we'll get into a lot more detail around the time scales and the needs for this type of energy storage and also into the details of this combustion process and how it produces power and how it produces heat. But for now, it's just a sketch and a little peek into how material production and energy storage can link together, can couple together to solve really important problems in both spheres. So I hope you liked today's episode, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you next week, Monday, 12, 12 p.m., youtube.com slash at energy sketch. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the bell and all that stuff. And I just love getting your comments and take care. See you next time. Toodaloo.